This video was produced for Weather and Climate 202. Our atmosphere is essentially one giant fluid mixture. When the sun heats the earth, the land near the equator receives the most electromagnetic radiation, while the surfaces near the poles receive far less. The heated ground near the equator heats the air around it, which subsequently rises into the atmosphere because it is less dense than colder air. At the same time, the cold air near the pole sinks and travels south in one giant cycle. We see this process every day in the form of wind. This cycle can also be seen somewhere else on Earth. The ocean has a similar function to our atmosphere. The warm salt water that's heated by the sun in the tropical latitudes will travel towards the poles, which then cools and sinks, forming a very similar mechanism to our atmosphere. Now, we all know that the Earth is heating up due to the proliferation of greenhouse gases emitted into the atmosphere. But what you may not know is that the polar regions are heating at a rate nearly two to three times faster than the rest of the planetary average. This phenomenon is known as Arctic amplification and is explained by the albedo effect. Albedo is simply the measure of how much sunlight a given surface reflects. Ice usually reflects up to 95% of incoming solar radiation, but because the ice caps are melting, the polar regions are beginning to absorb more radiation thus leading to the disproportionate heating of this region. The general consensus among the scientific community is that if all ice on Earth were to melt, the sea levels would rise by nearly 70 meters. However, we would only need to see a fraction of this amount introduced to begin to see profound effects on humanity. Many of the world's most populated cities, such as Amsterdam, Miami, Osaka, Bangkok, and Shanghai, are situated mere meters above sea level. The encroaching ocean water is already starting to have a myriad of negative effects, such as eroding beaches, threatening wildlife, the economy, and farmland. There is, however, a much lesser known effect to a rising sea level, one that might seem contradictory at first. As discussed earlier on our ocean map, the warmed and cooled salt water form a giant conveyor belt in the Atlantic. What this model does not account for, however, is the introduction of a prodigious amount of fresh water from melting ice caps. If Greenland's ice shelves continue to melt at the current rate, the Atlantic Ocean would be overwhelmed by an influx of cold fresh water. This fresh water is less dense than salt water and will not properly sink, which can slow down or entirely halt the Atlantic conveyor. In fact, an article published in Nature.com last year claims that the current is already slowing down. The repercussions of a damaged circulation would be profound. Ocean currents traveling towards the poles carry warm air with it, distributing it to Europe which keeps the continent warm. This helps explain why cities like London have a global average temperature nearly 15 degrees warmer than Winnipeg, which are located near the same latitude. If the Atlantic conveyor were to slow, warm air would not be carried towards the continent anymore and some estimates suggest this could cool the average temperature there by up to 18 degrees Fahrenheit. This could have a substantial impact on the region that already sees particularly harsh winters. It's also interesting to note that this would not be the first time we saw the collapse of the Atlantic conveyor. There is significant evidence that the circulation was slowed during a warming period between 20 and 13,000 years ago. The warming period abruptly ended with the introduction of the Younger Dryas period, and one of the leading theories to the sudden shift in global climate is the weakened Atlantic current causing the northern latitudes to cool off. Of course, it is foolish to expect the same result in a contemporary age, where there are far more factors, particularly anthropogenic ones, that are causing the climate crisis. To summarize, global warming does not necessarily mean everywhere on the planet will get hotter. This process has an unknowable amount of factors and components that could lead to radical changes to weather patterns across the planet, which is why the phrase climate change is much better suited to describe the impact of a warming world. Thanks for watching.